Mighty a-hole for treating my son's girlfriend like a daughter while excluding his sister? I, 60 male, have what I consider to be four children. My first wife had two children, Paul and Ruby, before we married. And because I loved her, I loved those children as my own. In our marriage, we had one child, Lucas. When Lucas was four, my then-wife decided that since we'd gotten married in our mid-twenties, we had married too young, and that she needed time to figure herself out. It devastated me, but we remained cordial and we've been amazing co-parents. For all those years, I've treated Paul and Ruby like my own children and they have keys to my home. The problem now has to do with Charlotte, my youngest son's girlfriend. Charlotte and Lucas have been friends since they were in 7th grade, and they started dating in 9th grade. Me and my current wife became legal guardians of Charlotte due to maltreatment at her house, and we unofficially adopted her when she was 14. She's my fourth child. For all of my children, I paid for their college education, got them cars on their 16th birthdays, you name it. Lucas and Charlotte went to medical school and I paid for their tuition. They're in residency now and I paid a rent for both of their apartments. My ex-wife likes Charlotte, but the other day she told me she needed me to start helping Marissa the way I help Charlotte. I was shocked, because in the more than 30 years I've known her, she's never demanded anything. And Marissa is the child she has with her current husband, so I don't feel any obligation towards Marissa. I told my ex-wife that Marissa is not my child, and that I want the best for her because she's the half-sister of three of my children, but I will not be contributing financially. I told my ex that whatever money she saved from me treating Paul and Ruby as my own children, she needs to contribute that savings toward Marissa. I mentioned how she didn't have to pay for anything regarding the two of them at the time she's known me. Her response was that Charlotte is not my daughter until Lucas marries her, and that I'm punishing Marissa because of who her father is. I could afford to help Marissa, but I'm choosing not to. And I've never had a fight with my ex until now. And it makes me concerned about how Lucas will view me or already views me for not helping his sister out. What should I do? Now for the top comments. So, to clarify, Paul and Ruby are not biologically yours. That being said, you treat them and pay for them as if they were biologically yours, because they existed prior to your marriage to your ex-wife. Incredibly kind and generous. Especially then ex-wife split ended things with you. Your ex-wife and you had a kid together, Lucas, who you take 100% financial responsibility and treat him like your child because he is. Congratulations for being a decent parent. Now, there's Charlotte who you've known since she was, what, like 10? Came from a horrible home life, and you became her legal guardians at 14. So again, you treat someone who isn't actually your own child like your own and take financial care of them. Very admirable. The question comes into play about Marissa, who is your ex-wife's new child. So she's related to Paul, Ruby, and Lucas. Aside from that, you've never taken care of her or been responsible for her because you're not with her mom and her mom has a husband. Not day whole. This is a very nice comment and it really made my day. I mean it. There's a genuine niceness there that I appreciate. It's honest. It is what most of us are thinking. You sound like an awesome dad. Keep up the good work. Not day Hall. You have zero obligation to her. It's ridiculous your ex even suggested this. Glad to hear from an outsider that it's ridiculous. I really was wondering whether Lucas thought I had perhaps been malicious all these years. When I see Marissa at public events, I'm very kind to her. And of course, if anything catastrophic happened to them, I wouldn't have them live on the street. But my ex and her husband are both federal employees making decent money. They're middle class and they had dads with Marissa's undergrad, but that's not the end of the world. I'm gonna bet that Lucas knows that despite her being his half-sister, she's not your obligation to pay for. Gently, I think you're worried about what Lucas will think for no reason. Given your kind treatment to Charlotte, he knows you're not some cruel guy who enjoys people suffering. My concern was really that the four of them having significantly different lives compared to Marissa, and I don't want there to be any tension because of me. This could be what my ex wanted me to feel. And it's working, I guess. Next story. Am I the a-hole for allowing my stepmom to adopt me? Okay, I-15 male have a stepmom, Carrie, 46 female. She has been my stepmom since I was six. My mom and dad divorced when I was three, after he caught my mom cheating. And my mom then moved in with her affair partner, Tim. Tim has always been a huge prick. At first, he seemed nice, but then after he and my mom got married, he became extremely rude. And he always tried to get me to call him dad, even though he knows I hate him. 
Tim would say things like, I stepped up to take care of you while your dad beat father stood around and did nothing. So call me dad. Even though my dad had most of the custody and Tim never even did anything to take care of me. Like when I was 10 and it was raining, I called him and asked him to pick me up from school but he told me to shut up and he was watching football. So I had to walk home in a t-shirt and shorts while it was raining and then when I got home my mom yelled at me for being wet. When I was 13, I had enough and went to live with my dad full time and I refused to see my mom or Tim. As far as I'm concerned, they are dead to me because they treated me like crap for years. My stepmom Carrie always helped me escape from my mom and Tim's toxicity. When I was little, she would read me bedtime stories and would play with me. She is an amazing person and I consider her to be my real mom. Last year, my dad got sick and he is worried that he may not live. So Carrie brought up the idea of adopting me so I won't have to go live with my mom and Tim if my dad dies. They asked me how it felt and I said, absolutely. And we immediately signed the adoption papers. My mother then gave up her parental rights to me and honestly, I was happy but also sad because it meant she didn't care about me. The conflict comes up though, because yesterday Tim showed up at my dad's house and demanded that I go to my mom's with him. I told him no and to get lost, and got angry and said, I'm your father, you little c-word, so get your butt over here and go back to your real parents' house. By this point, my dad came out and threatened to call the police, so he left. Now, Carrie and my dad are getting grief from my bio mom's family and social media for her adopting me. So I want to know, was I wrong to let Carrie adopt me? Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. My mother then gave up her parental rights to me. I'm your father, you little c-word. So get your butt over here and go back to your real parents' house. Tim is not a smart man. Not day hole. You are legally adopted. Request that your parents, the good ones, get a no-contact restraining order against him. It's a tough lesson to learn that you are being mistreated by people who should love and care for you. I'm sorry you had to learn it. Not day hole. Your dad is protecting you. If your mom wanted to be your real mom forever, she should have done a better job of it. If your stepmom is the one who's actually been in the role of mom and who you'd want to live with if your father passed, it absolutely makes sense to allow her to adopt you. And it's wonderful that she cares enough to do so. I'm sorry those people are doing this to you when you're already going through such a difficult time. If you don't mind, please show this next bit to your dad. You can take it out of context if you don't want them to see this thread. I think it's a good idea to show the whole thread to him so he knows how you're feeling. But you don't have to. Dear Opie's dad, please call the cops, non-emergency line, and report Tim's behavior. If you don't have a security camera already set up, consider getting one. There are pretty cheap ones on Amazon you can easily set up and hook up to your phone. Tim tried to kidnap your child and verbally harassed the kid in the process. If your kid had been home alone, there's no saying what would have happened and it could have been really dangerous. That's well worth a police report. Next story, am I the a-hole for kicking my mom's boyfriend and his kids from the house I inherited after my mom's death? They went to a homeless shelter. My 19 male parents divorced when I was 6. My mom got a boyfriend, Josh, and they started living together when I was 9. He had twin daughters, who were 4 when they moved in. Their mother was not in their lives anymore, so my mom took them in as their own. I admit that I was a little jealous because they had her full time and me only 50% of the time. I think my mom loved them more too. I was a quiet kid and spent most of my time in my room when my mom had me. I didn't want any siblings. My mom tried to but to no avail. By the time I was 16, I rarely spent time at my mom's place. And when I went to college, I got an apartment, even though my mom lived in the same city as my college. Mom tragically passed in December. And because Josh and her never got married for some reason, I inherited everything, including her house. I allowed Josh and the kids to still live there. I paid half the bills as he is struggling because of low paying job. My lease ends in December and I decided to move into my house after. I sat down with Josh and told him I was moving in January. Since this is my house, I will take the master's bedroom and he will move to my old room. He started crying. How that bedroom is a safe space and all my mom's things are there which gives him peace. I told him he can move few of her things to my old room. My room is one third of the master's bedroom. He started crying even more that he doesn't want to abandon their bedroom. I was pretty angry at that point, so I told him to just get out of the house then as I don't have the energy to deal with this nonsense. I've since cooled down, but three days later he sent me a message to notify me where he left the keys, and they had moved out. I found out they went to homeless shelter. 
I got messages from my mom's side of the family, how I'm heartless and cruel to kick them out. How the twins lost their mom and home in less than a year. The twins texted me how they can't believe their own brother made them homeless and asked me what they did wrong. My dad and his family told me I'm in the right. I do feel bad for them, but I still think I decide who gets what room in my house. Am I the a-hole? Other people have made good points. Opie shouldn't have spoken in anger. But at 19 and carrying such a heavy load, he can perhaps be forgiven for that. This Josh dude put Opie in a very awkward position. And when Opie tried to make the situation fairer in a way that benefited both sides, Josh freaked out, moved out, and is now sending flying monkeys to guilt Opie. Not the whole Opie. Josh is grieving, but he cannot expect you, a person who has little obligation to him, to continue to pay half his bills and maintain a separate residence at 19. That's unreasonable. If you're going to be supporting them, he should have expected you to return to the house. And as you're now returning as the homeowner and an adult covering half the bills, he should have realized giving you your childhood room back wasn't going to cut it. I understand why it hurts for him, but he should have been willing to give up the room. It would have been better to give the man some time to work through his emotions. This is a case where you continually hold a boundary. Don't back down, but allow the other side some time to come to terms with it. Affirm, you are welcome to stay here with me, but I will be moving into the house on X date and I will be taking the master suite. Would have been far, far better than telling them to get out. That's all you had to say, and then no one could accuse you of anything. But you're 19, and this is a mess of a situation. You deserve to be allowed to learn from this situation if you didn't perfectly handle it on your first attempt. I agree, but I'm stuck on this one point. Thing is, Josh didn't need to move out until December. Opie has a lease that and them, so they'll be moving to the house. They were having the first conversation discussing the situation of Opie planning to move in. Josh has been grieving for over half a year, while getting his bills paid by Opie as soon as this conversation happens. He didn't take any time to make plans. He just leaves? The room and stuff that was so important? No plans. No intent to evict even started. He just takes his family and leaves, and contacts the mother's side of the family. Reads strange. Yes, Opie failed to have enough tact in that moment. Maintaining more than one household is difficult, and Opie shouldn't have had this burden. Opie's also grieving the loss of his mother. Not day hole. It's not a great situation for anyone, but he's been freeloading off of Opie, guilting a 19-year-old into financially supporting him. Not only paying half their bills, but paying to live elsewhere so Josh could have the house. You're entitled to live in your own house, and you're especially entitled to the master bedroom. Josh tried to guilt Opie and bailed when that failed. Last story. Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister-in-law out for eating my order? My husband's sister moved in with us after a major argument about the baby's name. They're expecting, and she's seven months in. She's known to be picky and refuses to eat what we normally cook. We only cook her favorite food, which I can't eat due to allergies. So every day at dinner, I have to figure out what to eat since she only eats food that I'm allergic to. Last night, my husband agreed that he'd cook for her and cook for us together separately. I got home after a long day at work and found out that sister-in-law convinced my husband to only cook the meal she wanted and cancel all the meal we planned to have. I saw them eating together in the kitchen. My husband apologetically said his sister convinced him to eat with her and not cook the meal I wanted us both to have. I said it was fine, then went to order some food from the restaurant. I went to take a shower and did some work on my laptop then came downstairs to find my order placed on the kitchen counter. It was open and someone ate the majority of it. I turned around and there was sister-in-law standing saying she woke up hungry and couldn't resist the smell that was coming out of the box. I lost it and yelled at her asking why she did that. But she said that she did save me some, which isn't true because there was only some rice and dressings. We started arguing and I told her I couldn't take this anymore and told her to pack her things and leave first thing in the morning. She began crying and my husband got involved in defending her up and down, repeatedly saying she's pregnant and is eating for two basically. He suggested I go make myself something quick from the fridge and let go, but I refused and a bigger argument ensued. Am I the a-hole for kicking her out over this? Not the a-hole. And you don't have a sister-in-law problem, you have a husband problem. Don't get me wrong, your sister-in-law sounds like a spoiled, selfish and entitled piece of work, pregnant or not. But your problem is that your husband is more concerned with her health and happiness than yours. He needs to get his priorities in the right place. All day. 
husband is the problem, also not the a-hole. Yeah, like how exactly was the husband convinced that his wife, who only promised to make food for and therefore was expecting it, didn't need to eat dinner and didn't need to be told that she would have no dinner. Apparently, literally, because she wasn't even allowed the food she got for herself afterwards. Sister-in-law is the a-hole, but husband is the bigger a-hole. Just throw the whole family away. It's very clear how little they think of you, OP. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole, and honestly, I think your husband should go with her. She's not an infant herself. She can make her own food if she doesn't want what everyone else is having. And if she wants more when she's done with that, she can find a way to get it that doesn't involve depriving you of even one meal. OMG, this. So, so much. Okay, she convinced him to eat with her to keep company, but he should have still either cooked for you as promised or ordered takeout. You need to have a major talk with him. That's not okay. Not the a-hole. She knew what she was doing. Even if she did leave you some, she's disrespectful as heck for not asking first, especially after she already ate dinner. You couldn't have been in the shower for that long. She wasn't hungry. She's greedy and vindictive. You need to have a chat with your husband about his pre-